In the Emerald Lands of Ireland, a child was born into a legacy of shadows. Nina Williams entered a world where death was the family trade. Her father, Richard Williams, was a man of few words, known in the underground circles as a master assassin, regularly working under the Irish Republican Army. Her mother, a skilled practitioner of Aikido, was as graceful as she was deadly. In the Williams household, life was not about living. It was about surviving. Nina's childhood was far from normal. Where other children learned nursery rhymes, she learned the art of silence. Her lullabies were the muffled sounds of combat. It was a life chosen for her, a destiny written in blood. Her assassination skills were honed under her father's tutelage. Every day was a lesson in discipline and strength. Her body and mind were pushed to the limits. It was the influence of her mother that introduced Nina to the elegance of movement, the dance of Aikido that would become her preferred fighting style in combat. The training was not the only thing that shaped young Nina. It was her relationship with her younger sister, Anna Williams, who was trained alongside her. Anna was everything Nina was not, expressive, emotional, and craving affection. Their rivalry began as a battle for their parents' attention, a competition that soon spiraled into jealousy and resentment. Nina was happy to follow in the footsteps of their father and become an assassin. Anna, however, desired a more ordinary life. While their mother always treated them equally, her father never forgave her for not wanting to become an assassin and always favored Nina. As the pair grew, their skills improved, along with their animosity. What started as childish squabbles would soon turn into deadly confrontations. Their home was a battleground for their ever-growing feud. As young women, the outside world served as their period of rest, a place where they could be something other than assassins in training. It was here where they would show the faint but brief signs of sisterhood without the presence of their father's constant tutelage. They would look out for each other. The shadow of their heritage loomed large. They walked the cobbled streets as young warriors, their eyes always alert, their senses always sharp. One day, an altercation occurred where Nina and Anna easily dispatched a group of drunks for persisting with unwanted advances. Her swift reaction time and killer instinct caused Nina to further realize her destiny. She was born to be an assassin, and nothing could change that path. You're lucky I was here, Anna. You'd have been overwhelmed. I was handling it just fine until you barged in. Whatever, I'm going home. Nina, slow down. Just wait for me. Nina's reputation began to precede her. Tales of her contracts reached the ears of those in the darker corners of the world. Now possessing a lethal edge, she was an asset, a weapon to be hired, and a tool for the ambitions of others. Nina's cold, indifferent persona began to solidify. She learned to mask her emotions, to bury any semblance of vulnerability under a veneer of ice. Her interactions were transactional, her relationships superficial. The only constant in her life was her rivalry with Anna a flame that refused to be extinguished. Nina's first major contract came as no surprise. It was a validation of her skills. The target was none other than Heihachi Mishima, a name that reverberated in the underworld. He was the owner of the Mishima Zaibatsu, an enormous business conglomerate with interests in many areas, the same group that sponsored and hosted the King of Iron Fist tournament. She surmised her hiring was likely a typical power struggle between corporations, something she had seen many times before. She chose to never get involved personally in her contracts. Her only focus was the mission and the lucrative financial reward that tied it all together. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament. As the King of Iron Fist Tournament commenced, Nina entered the fray. Her objective was clear, 
assassinate Heihachi Mishima. The tournament was a convergence of the world's greatest fighters, the perfect cover for her assignment. She deduced that the only way to gain access to the highly guarded Heihachi would be to advance to the finals where he would be her opponent, the perfect moment to strike. Beyond the contract, unbeknownst to her, the tournament was set to be the stage for personal vendettas and unresolved conflicts. Nina's first significant battle was more than a simple contest. It was a continuation of a lifelong feud. Her opponent was none other than her sister, Anna Williams. Their fight would become a spectacle of years of bitterness and rivalry. What are you doing here, Anna? Getting in my way. I'm here to show you who really belongs in the spotlight, Nina. You never could accept that I was better. Better at following orders, maybe, you lapdog. I chose my path. A path in my shadow, as always. You never understood the gravity of our legacy, Anna. I understand just fine. I'm more than just a killer, unlike you. And yet here we are. You're no different. Nina Williams versus Anna Williams. Final round, fight! <laughs> <laughs> The fight was a blend of elegant martial arts, a dance they had rehearsed since childhood. The sisters knew each other's moves intimately, but in the end, Nina emerged victorious. Her skill and focus outmatched Anna's fiery temperament. This was inevitable, Anna. You always fall short. Why do you always have to be so heartless, Nina? Heartlessness is a necessity in our line of work. You should know that better than anyone. Ah! This isn't over, Nina. It will never be over between us. It's over when I say it's over. Keep trying. Maybe one day you'll understand. Nina's next opponent was Michelle Chang, a Native American fighter of exceptional skill and determination. Michelle's cause, fueled by the need to avenge her father, brought a depth of passion to the fight that Nina begrudged. Father, give me the strength to win this battle. What are you talking about? Nobody will fight your battles for you. Heihachi killed my father. I must win this tournament to avenge his death. It's my duty as his daughter. This is nothing personal. Avenging a dead man won't bring him back. You're chasing ghosts, just like I thought. How dare you! My father's memory deserves respect. Respect is earned in the living world, not by clinging to memories. Let's get this over with. Nina Williams versus Michelle Chang. Their battle took a surprising turn. Michelle's reaction to Nina's cold disregard for her plight caused her to lose focus. Intentional or not, Nina capitalized, her icy demeanor and lethal precision ensuring her victory. Advancing to the quarterfinals, Nina was one step closer to her goal. However, the tournament brought her face to face with fellow quarterfinalist, Marshall Law, the fighter now known for his fluid fighting style and charismatic presence. You seem like you're not here to play around. Ready for a real challenge? I didn't come here for games. I'm here for victory. That's the spirit. Let's see what you got. Nina Williams versus Martial Law. <laughs> Nina
Tina underestimated Law's skill, a miscalculation that cost her dearly. After losing in the tournament so close to the finish line, Nina retreated angered and confused. Her failure to eliminate Heihachi Mishima was a crack in her otherwise unblemished facade. She was not used to losing. As the echoes of the King of Iron Fist tournament faded, Nina returned to her apartment, the dim lights casting long shadows across the room. It was her sanctuary, a place where she could shed the mask of the assassin. Reflecting on the tournament, Nina had proven her skills, besting fighters of the highest caliber, including her sister, Anna. Yet the sting of her defeat lingered, a twist in her meticulously planned mission. Her thoughts drifted to the call she would have to make. Reporting her failure was not just a matter of professional pride, it was a matter of survival in the dangerous world of assassination. Her contractor agreed to grant her one last opportunity to take down the head of the Mishima Zabatsu. However, this came with a stern warning. Failure this time would result in far more deadly consequences. Nina decided to frame this setback as an opportunity, a chance to reassess and recalibrate, a chance at redemption. Seeking a temporary escape from life's demands, Nina decided to visit the family home, hoping to gain insights from her father's advice that could enhance her skills. Her visits were methodical, rare, and always purpose-driven. Anna also chose this time to visit, but her motives were vastly different yearning for maternal warmth and a respite from pursuits of her own in the world of assassination. In stark contrast to Nina's calculated intentions with their father, Anna sought solace from their mother and a momentary return to normalcy. Why do you bother visiting, Nina? Running from your failures? I don't run. I confront my challenges head on, something you could learn from. You're pathetic. As expected, the convergence of the sisters at the family home was like a bomb waiting to explode. The memories of their competitive upbringing became the backdrop for yet another chapter in their never-ending feud.